just start now with, well, Ken Griffin there talking about the hit to financial markets. Do you see a hit right now? Do you see a hit to fintech in general, the iteration, the innovation? Yeah, so, you know, obviously, unfortunate the situation with, with FTX, but in terms of uh, broadly speaking, you know, the fintech landscape and the partnerships that can be developed between fintechs and banks, uh, we think those that have, you know, durable business models that are focused on, you know, very specific client needs, um, especially in the B2B space, uh, we're still very constructive and we're still looking to develop partnerships with companies uh, like Travada. And of course, you help at Travata to visualize, to analyze cash flows. And I'm interested, Brett, therefore, in how it was for you raising funds, finding partnerships like you forged with JP Morgan and being able to raise more funds. How hard is it in this landscape at the moment? Not of never mind the FTX collapse, but you know, the slowdown in the economy more broadly. Well, we closed our last round, our Series B, in, in May. And, and uh, you know, I've been in startups for most of my career. I've been a CFO of, of three venture-backed high-growth startups. And raising money is never easy in any climate. But mm -hmm. I think uh, at the end of the day, if you're really bringing the right innovation to the market, if you've got a lot of traction in the market with customers, uh, then then it's, it's, it's going to happen. And I think a big part of our story is that we work closely with banks. And that's, we've got four of the largest banks in the world as investors in our company because we're building out this next-gen experience to make it easy for businesses to manage cash. So I, I think because of that, too, uh, as we, you know, J.P. Morgan was our, our early, earliest investors when they kind of caught this early as we brought Square as, as really the first company to connect to a corporate banking API. So I think just given the traction and then what we largely know is fintech, which is consumer and small business, it's starting to heat up on the, on the corporate side. If you look in the last 10 years, debt is cheap. You haven't really had to sharpen your toolkit in terms of uh, trying to go for yield. All those things are starting to change. Mm. And then, you know, what we do is, you know, we're bringing out, you know, automating this this uh, cash forecasting, which has always been sort of holy grail in finance. So I think because of those things, because where things are headed on the corporate side in, in fintech, um, it feels like we're just sort of heating up. So we're fortunate. Okay, Brett, dig into me, therefore, as you continue to invest, as you continue to iterate, as you continue to make sure that we see this efficiency within particularly B2B and, and cash analysis. How much do you depend on innovations such as blockchain in any way? Is that something that you continue to depend upon as a, as a future growth forecast for, the, forecaster for you? Well, there's really no dependence. I mean, we've been watching it, of course. Uh, um, we're curious what happens. Mm. Uh, it's unfortunate to see things as they've unfolded over the last, uh, uh, especially over the last days, weeks. Um, we have one of our largest customers and our earliest customers, Square, mm. uh, one of the handful of courts who, who corporates who actually hold <laughs> block uh, Bitcoin. So we we actually can accommodate that, so they can see their. Bitcoin holdings in Travada, mm. which is pretty cool. But for the most part, most corporates aren't. There's been a few that have looked at Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. I don't think that was a real thing for the most part. So most everybody's watching. And I guess, you know, I was in the, when I started my career was in the late 90s and yeah. saw this whole Web 1.0. And I, I think we'll probably see things, re, you know, finally getting ironed out for the for V2 when it when it comes. And Web3 as and when, too, as well. I'm interested, Jason, therefore, where's op where is opportunistic for you? Where are you seeing the most inbound in terms of further partnerships you can forge? We were just hearing, of course, of a digital dollar, the, the practicing, the piloting of that scheme happening in Wall Street between certain financial institutions and, indeed, the Federal Reserve here in New York. But what are you thinking of in terms of innovations here? So, you know, when we think about innovation and fintech partnerships, uh, really, it, it all starts with, with the client need. And what we see typically is fintechs tend to be very, very sharply focused on a specific client need. They're applying new technology, sort of a novel approach to solving, uh, you know, an opportunity in, in the landscape. And so, on one hand, you've got fintechs moving fast, iterating, using new technology. And on the other hand, on the bank side, we have client relationships, client trust, and distribution. And so when you marry those things to, together uh, through you know, collaboration and using technology like open banking, which is what Travada is based on, uh, you know, we think it's a situation where you know, one plus one equals much more than two when we combine forces. Talk to us about the global footprint now, Brett. Of course, open banking is something very much embraced in Europe. But how are we seeing this play out globally? How do you see your own footprint expanding? Yeah, open banking, as that's been coined, really largely what happened in, it's been happening in Europe with 
the PSD2, but it's largely consumers and small business. And so now those banks are having to, uh, it's a standards body, it's requiring them to be able to pass client data to the FinTech community for downstream applications. Uh, but in the US, but on the corporate side, even they don't have to meet the PSD2 standard in, in Europe. So even corporate banks in Europe, that data is still locked up. Uh, on the corporate side though, JP Morgan, other big banks are building APIs on the corporate side. Unfortunately, there's not a standard, but that's a big part of what we do. We're helping to, uh, we've now got the largest library of corporate you know, APIs, bank APIs in the world. So we're, it's, you know, customers are looking to us to really normalize all that data and really drive a standard. We've got some big banks that are asking us now for a standard spec. So in the absence of a standard, but in the US, the corporate banks have really been leading the charge mm. to open for open banking on the corporate side. And, and now as we're trying to lean in and help standardize that, all of that, um, it's just making all that data accessible and, and, and speeding up a, a lot of these next gen experiences that happen on the corporate side. Okay, Jason, turn some of that, which unless you're very familiar with open banking, you don't really know what PSD2 is. Tell me yeah. as a layman, what this means yeah. for my future, my banking relationships. What does it mean for the companies that Absolutely. you serve? What does it mean for the individuals that you serve? Absolutely, so great question. So open banking, you could think of it as essentially a, a, a structural change in financial services. And what open banking enables is the owner of a bank account. So whether that be you with your own personal account or a bank, uh, excuse me, a business and their corporate account, it, it allows and enables the owner of that account to provide access to the data and the services in that account to third parties. And so it might, might, might sound a little you know, shocking, hey, is that, is that scary, is that risky? Mm -hmm. But in fact, really what it does is it enables a whole you know, suite of new products and services to be delivered um, with banking and embedded banking solutions within it. And so on the personal side, you maybe you use a budgeting tool uh, for, for you or your family, and you wanna have real-time information come in from your bank accounts and your credit cards and different pay statements into a budgeting tool. That's a good example of a use of open banking on, on the consumer side. Travada, a great example on the corporate side where as a treasurer or a CFO, you're constantly trying to get your arms around what is the working capital needs for your business? And so what Travada has done is used our JP Morgan and other banks APIs yeah. to get real-time data fields, uh, so uh, real-time data feeds, index that, and then overlay a really elegant user interface interface for cash forecasting and working capital management. And so mm -hmm. those are sort of examples of how opening up access to, to, to data within bank accounts yeah. can create new value and new products and services for businesses and consumers.